Let me share the screen. Today's our topic is a Sarima model. Now the Sarima model uh, comes in a forecasting. Let me just uh, run you quickly through where we learned this um, Arima and all. Okay, so this is our mind map. And when we were dealing with time series data, right, forecasting, time series data. That is where we learned about ARIMA model. Um, before getting into ARIMA model and SARIMA model, let's just do a small recap of what is a time series data. Time series data is the data where you just have a single variable and the other variable is time, meaning the output variable, the single variable is arranged in sequence according to the time. Okay, that is time series data. And when it comes to time series data, we go with forecasting models. In forecasting models, we learned about model-based approaches as well as data-driven approaches. In model-based approach, we learned that we will be looking at the trend seasonality of the data. Let me just grab my pen. Give me a minute. Uh, all these uh, time series data will have the, the three components, level, trend and seasonality. Level is average. So all the data will have average. Any, any time series data will have the level. Trend is whether it is linear, uh, exponential or polynomial. We are trying to find the trend and also seasonality. Seasonality will be for like say one year, you will be able to capture the seasonality of data for one year duration. Right. And uh, here you have two different types of seasonalities, additive and multiplicative seasonalities. So these are all the things that we learned in class. And what we do when it comes to model based approaches is we build multiple models and try to capture the trend and seasonality. Say you are getting a really good result with polynomial model and additive seasonality. We build our final model by combining these two models. That is what a model based approach does. But the problem with model based approach is it, it will not be able to capture any sudden change in the data. Okay, if there is any sudden change, recent changes there, it won't be able to capture. That is where we were talking about data driven approaches. In data driven approaches, we talk about smoothing instead of average moving average, we calculate smoothing, exponential smoothing. What happens in exponential smoothing is you give more importance to the recent data compared to the past data. So if there is any change, recent change that will be captured, that is data driven approaches. As part of this, we have seen um, exponential smoothing, and uh, Holtz method. The other one is Holtz winter method. These three methods we saw in data driven. And we also learned about auto regression model. In auto regression model, what happens is it will be forecasting. The model that we built will be forecasting for the future months. Okay. Say if T is there, T plus one will be forecasted. And along with the forecasting, it will include the error from one timestamp behind. That means error of T. So our AR model assumes or tells us that when we include the error, we get better forecasting. That is an AR model. Then we learned about difference in model I, where we are trying to find the stationary data. 
right? So here we will be differencing our data with uh, lag of one if we want to get D-trend data. If we want D-season data, either we go for lag 12, if it is monthly data is given, lag of 12, or we go for lag of 4 if quarterly data is given. So this will de-season our data. Differencing. Then MA is moving average. Right? Moving average will be smoothing out our um, pattern. Like say, if at all our pattern is like this. When we apply moving average, uh, if it is say moving average of 8, somewhere at 8 it will start and then you will get a smoother curve like this. Right. So these are the three different models and what we can do is we can combine them and build different combinations. So multiple models you can build. Either you can build a plain AR model or you can build like ARI model combination or you can build ARMA model or you can also build ARI MA ARIMA model right and uh, the factors that decide or the parameters that we select are for AR we have P and for um, integrated this is differential we have D parameter and for moving average, we have Q parameter. When we are um, developing or, you know, building a ARIMA model, we give these parameters, PDQ values, and we will get a model, output of the model. That is what we learned in class when we were doing our data science, ARIMA model. Now, today our topic is <coughs> SARIMA. Okay. Now, SARIMA is nothing but Seasonal autoregressive integrated moving average. S is added along with ARIMA. S is included. Season. Season. Seasonal ARIMA is nothing but SARIMA. Okay. Now it adds uh, new parameters to specify. First one we know autoregression. And the second one is differencing. Third one is moving average. Here along with all these three we also have seasonal component of the series okay so that is sarima model along with the p d and q we are also having m m here represents seasonality in arima we just have p d and q in sarima we also have m now arima is a model that can be fitted to time series data why are we building this arima model so that we can forecast for our future data points. Okay. MA stands uh, for moving average. Q stands for lagged forecast. Okay. And um, the SARIMA is a seasonality ARIMA along with autoregression, differential, and moving average we also have S, seasonality, which is M. Now, these things which I explained uh, on the other slide is what is uh, given here. We are talking about what is differencing. So when we want stationary data, right, what we do is we, we will be differencing for trend and seasonality. Twice, two times we when we do the differentiation, we will get the stationary data. Okay. You can, first step is you can do seasonality differentiation and um, you can also do differentiation for trend. Now, along with that uh, stationary data, we are also talking about non-seasonal differencing. If trend is present in data, we may also need non-seasonal differencing. So here it is capturing the trend of the data. What is the pattern, whether it is linear trend or polynomial or an um, exponential like that, we are trying to capture the trend. 
okay the trend will be removed uh, you know when you do the d trend or differentiation on trend differentiation on the trend will be done by lag 1 Okay, this is the non-seasonal behavior. Um, we've learned about ACF plot in class. Then there is also something called partial ACF. The difference between ACF and uh, ESCF is ACF plot will capture the correlation between, right, between the actual time and the lag values. Actual Y at time T and y with the lag say t minus 1 right with the previous lag values it will compare and when you find the correlation and you plot it it is known as acf plot or correlogram okay now what this pacf is partial acf where we are see here we are comparing uh, maybe like you know if day before yesterday's data is there, day before yesterday data, you can compare this output with your yesterday's data as well as today's data. Here we are only comparing with one timestamp. Here you are comparing with multiple timestamps. That is a partial, uh, this one, ACF plot. That is the difference. Okay, so when you want to capture all these details, you will be looking at ACF as well as PACF. So here we are in Sarima model, we are capturing non-seasonality and the seasonality with a multiplicative model. In a multiplicative model, we are trying to capture these details okay now let's get to the code part yeah here um it is showing us uh, all the packages that we need to load then we are loading the data i have shared all this here guys in the meet if you come to the meet You can see this I symbol here on the right hand side bottom. When you click here, you have um, all the files, all the Jupyter notebooks as well as your input data. Okay, the input data is uh, like this. The sale of cooling fans uh, over one week's time along with the number of hours in the day, 24 hours and uh, seven days of the week. This is the data that we have. On this data, we are going to build our Sarima model. This is how we built our Sarima model. And we are giving the PDQ and the M values. Okay. And um, we are building the model. So here you can see that um, this is the normal. And this is what is given us for our uh, Sarima model output. Okay. This is how you got your uh, model. This is how we have predicted the model. And when we are trying to predict or forecast, what is happening is this is how we are getting the result. The blue part till here is our past data. These are the predictions along with our uh, confidence interval. The, the shaded part is confidence interval. You can see that there is a gap from here to here. So that prediction, to remove that gap, what we do is um, start from one stamp before. So we have to remove, uh, see here, last observed value as the first prediction. So if we do that, whatever our last uh, observation is there, if we are giving it as our first prediction value, then that gap in that uh, prediction is gone forecasting and you can see that it has captured the seasonality as well as trend of the data it is doing a good prediction model 
right? So this is how Sarima works. And I have given all the um, files as well as the input data to you guys. You can just um, download them, right? Copy from here. And uh, that is all I have got for you guys for today. What is not there? See here, click on I. When you click on I, there is I am sharing the screen. See that from that is where you have to download. Uh, um, Ajay, are you here? Ajay. Last week also we did the same thing, right? We were able to download. I can see the files, guys. Uh, let me just check, uh, cross-check with my uh, teammate why you all are not able to get that. Okay, just give me a minute. 